Hey guys, welcome back. So, to begin, just like everything else, blah blah blah. Um, this video is not made for kids. This is not a kids video. This has adult language for adults. Um, the adult language is not suitable for kids. After warning all parents that this video has adult language not suitable for kids, we can begin. Okay? So, the last thing I wanted to really mention, I wanted to put it in the last, uh, in the last part of the last video of the Mauler tanks. Um, we'll do it on this review. So, um, these are, again, the original tanks. They have the tow hooks. Um, you can look at the way the tracks are set. So the tracks, um, let me see, right here, if we can focus in on it. Let's try, focus, focus, focus. There it goes. Okay, so as you see that the, uh, what is it, the way the track is, um, it's flat on top and it goes down like if it's an arrow coming this way, right? It's an arrow pointing down on the side of the track, you see that? Okay. And if you look in the back of the, of the tracks, let me flip this this way. So that you can see, you see the slots or the little things here? They are on the inside of the tank, right? Now the thing, the reason why I bring that up to you guys is because, again, in 1998, when they came out with the, with the, collector's special or the special edition collector's edition <laughs> whatever whatever it was okay uh back in 1998 again they came out with their uh mobat tanks right so here's the again the mobat tank from that year so again you can see it's dusty my bad but there it is it's gi joe Again, dusty. So, G.I. Joe. Okay. Now you can see the actual tires or the um, the bogies, the road wheels, and the track itself is thinner. It's more thinner than the original. The original are a little bit wider. Not by much, but still a little bit wider. Okay? The other thing that I wanted to mention is that, again, you saw that the little slots or the, the little spikes were on the inside of the, t of the tracks. On these 90s versions, they are on the outside of the tracks, as you can see right here. Now, if you were to uh, try and switch it around, it would not work. Okay, it would it would uh, get stuck. So everything works basically the exact same way as the original. It's just that these are the later version, and as you can see, that's weird. Yes, because it has no tow hook. They completely deleted it. They took it off. So that's another thing that you can look for when you're not sure if it's, you know, an, uh, an original 1980s or a 1990s, mid-90s, really. So, or I guess late 90s, either way. So we come over here. And we look at the date, 1998 Hasbro, made in China. Okay, still has its sticker right there, caution, all that. 
and this one has a bar across, running across, going upwards. They completely deleted where you could have just pulled it off and they went with a screw right there. So now you had to, or you have to, uh, unscrew it to put the batteries in. Okay? And they kept the slotted tracks. Although these are modified, as I said, they're a little bit thinner. Again, not by much, but they are still a little thinner. And uh, the little spike things here, I, I keep forgetting how you call those things. They're not called spikes, but those things, they're on the outside. And one last thing again, let's put it this way. You can see that the mid 90s, the late 90s, is taller than the original. So these are shorter, these are taller. Again, flush. Look a little bit up. You can see, probably, that yes, it is taller than the original. Okay? Now with all that being said, these look great. I love the camouflage look. The OD green with the dark gray and the tan color looks great. Um, the other thing is, some of these, the I believe the 98s, they did have a machine gun. So you could have um, had a 50 cal on it. But later on, they completely uh, deleted this as well. So, you gotta look out for that as well. On the, you know, the later versions of, the, of this type of tank. So, again, very cool. It has all the stickers, like the Crimson Attack Tank right here. Just, of course, different uh, colors. This one's all white. It still has the... Those uh, decals and stickers. Again, like on this one. Let me try and find... There it is. Idler Access. So there's that one. And there's the 90s. There's the... There's this one over here. That right there. Also V12 Turbo 1200. V12 Turbo 1200. So, oh, and the other thing is this right here, the X08. X08. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Let's move this one aside and then let's start comparing the sizes to other tanks of 118 scale. Let's take the book out. Okay guys. Let's do, um, let's start with a Sherman tank. And we will compare it with the Crimson Guard tank. So there you can see. Roughly the same size. I mean, obviously it's a lot smaller, but it's still pretty close. Okay, so that's that. Now let's look at it face on. Okay.
So very, very cool. Um, do these look good together? As in if you guys are making displays and putting your G.I. Joes with real World War II scale uh, tanks versus uh, Maulers and Mobat tanks and attack tanks and all this. Do they look good? Well, that's up to you guys. Me personally? Yeah, I like it. It looks pretty badass. Now let's look at that with the molar. The mall. However you guys pronounce it. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody out there is like, that's not how you pronounce it. So, this one is a bigger tank. The molar I'm talking about. So you can see that right there. Come down this way, look at it, straight at it. Yep, I would say this one looks a lot better with this one here. A lot better. But, uh, okay, so that's the Sherman tank. Let's look at it with the... Walker Bulldog. Okay. So here's the Walker Bulldog. Now that looks even better. That really does look good. Okay. Looking at it from the top view. You can probably see that it's roughly the same size from the back to the front. The barrels. I mean, really, it's beautiful. It's really nice. Very good uh, scale with both of them right there. So, hell yeah. Okay. Now... We're going to look at it with the the Mobat tank right here. The top. So again, roughly the same size in the back. And the front, just a little bit off, but still very nice. Okay, we're going to now look at it with, uh, I guess we can do a Tiger tank, why not, right? Here is the Tiger Tank. Right there. Still, the Mauler looks a lot better. With comparison, I mean. Size comparison. Now, if, you're, if some of you guys are like, hey, what is this? I had a, a Panzer III in 118 scale. I ended up selling it, and I found this later on, and I was like, oh, crap, this went on the turret. I'll put it on the Tiger tank. <laughs> so that's why that's there. But anyway, as you can see that, okay, 
Now from this, and the Tiger tank is a huge tank. Now we're gonna do the M1 A1 Abrams 118 scale. And there you go. <laughs> Freaking humongous right there. That shot looks pretty badass right there. Okay. So, they're roughly the same height. The Mobat is a little bit smaller or shorter. But overall, they still look badass with the 118 scale tanks. I mean, they are 118 scale, but again, compared to the Forces of Valor or the Bravo team, 21st century toys. Um, oh my god, what was the other one? Ugh. Ultimate Soldier, and there's another one. I keep forgetting the other one. But anyway, those tanks compared, or, you know, right next to the G.I. Joe tanks, they still look good. They look very, very good. So, again, from, again, this one's like maybe three quarters, you know, away from the, from that. And this one pretty close also. But that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review, this comparison, uh, all the information that I uh, looked up all those years ago, and um, all that. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed all that. And now that we have this new camera, we will be looking at all the detail a lot better with all the new videos that we will be making. And uh, stay tuned for that. So I'm going to put the Abrams back. And we are going to have these two compared side by side to each other. So again, do you guys want your figures to be standing halfway out of the tank? Or do you want your figures to be seated inside of the tank, nice and comfortable? With two or more figures inside the tank. And who's that? That's Dusty, a desert soldier. He came out, I think, in 1990. 1990 or 1991 around there and this other model over here has these other two figures right here i forgot his name and i forgot this other guy's name so there's this guy then there's this guy <laughs> but they're sitting inside the tank ready to kick some ass
Okay, so anyway guys, I again, I hope you enjoyed this three-parter. Um, trying to have the camera focus here. There you go. So yeah, beautiful tank. This is my holy grail. This is my, the one that I love more than any other G.I. Joe tanks. This one right here. Love the black and red. It looks evil. It looks wicked. It looks kick-ass. Just perfect, in my opinion. And this one here is a damn good tank. Um, happy to have it. Um, love these. Not as much as that one, but I love these. They're very good. Again, the detail, everything, the suspension, all the little things that you can open up, you can look inside. It does move, it does um, climb, and I mean, just so much stuff you can do with this one. But, again, love this tank. Love it, love it, love it. So, that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. So, talk to you guys later.